we go. <coughs> we gonna um, let's, let's read this from David Banner allegedly. From David Banner, he said, "Maybe if black kids called each other gods, they would treat each other as such, and maybe you would start praising them." Okay. So we all get what he's trying to say, right? But let's get in it with quotes is enough. No. Because we can't be Hypocrites, we can't be ignorant all the time. If you want black kids to call each other gods, why is he calling them black kids? Why not just say gods? <laughs> all black gods. <laughs> he can't because. He can't identify them with that term. But what I'm gonna teach him today, there is a term <laughs> that he can use, or he should use, that will accomplish what he's trying to do. Get across and accomplish it for the so called black kids and for the people who would be praising them. They might don't praise them, but they will have no choice but to either praise them or hate them. But the truth of the matter is. I'm going to prove how he can use that term while using that term. Not everybody else can use that term too. Regardless if they know what it means. So, let's continue. It's going to be a, a good bit. I'm going to prove. That Morris of all and Morris of new, our stuff don't really change. Quote unquote, pump cup. Morris in Peru. These gold that's on display in Peru and they say anchors and Aztecs. Those walls, a lot of captives end up on plantations. These captives came from wars in quote unquote Africa. But these museums gonna tell you this is anchor and Aztec go. So put two and two together. Before we begin, take everything you think you know about the term more and throw it away. This painting in Philadelphia known as the Morris Chief and we all know who that is. I'm just showing you phenotypically how people in history who consider Morris of the sovereigns, nobles, princes, kings, by the term more whole significant within itself. We're going to see why they 
been persecuted back then and why they were persecuted now. That's one of the texts I could be making the series on. This text is one of the most used texts that I see when they talk about the transatlantic slave trade. <laughs> but when you go through it, you're going to see that it reads differently than what's being said in movies being made about. <laughs> but let's get into that book. This is a translation by somebody else. <laughs> We're going to see how they don't even know what they're talking about. So we got Zuara, the original author. <laughs> he going to try to explain why Zuara is calling these quote-unquote West Africans Moors in his own way. <laughs> but we're going to use his translation just for our own purposes. In the Chronica de Fietos de Guinea, therefore the grim reality of the slavery, and I underline in parts just so we won't have to read the whole thing so I can go faster. Right, so he said, he's dealing with Zorara. Zorara is a chronicler who would go with the Portuguese. They are a lot of chroniclers, but a chronicler give you the best history because they at the scene writing down what's going on even though they could be lying or exaggerating or stuff but you still you rather have that than somebody else 200 years away from that scene telling you something about that so he talks about it the grim realities of slave raids and sales so he talk about total assimilations of Africans, right? So he used the term African. This modern day author who write about Suhara from fourteen fifties. So Suhara ain't using that term. Just him. So let's make the point. He gonna translate some of Zuhara words. So Zuhara used the term Moros in fourteen fifty three. So he said he took an offer of the best of those moors to the church of that place and another little moor and after became a friar of St. Francis they sent to St. Vincent de Cabo so they turned the captives moors into Christians friars and pastors and stuff like that and sent them where he lived after where he lived ever after as a Catholic Christian, see, without having understanding or perception of any law that than that true and holy law in which we all which all we Christians hope for our salvation. <coughs> so that been a fate of some of the most of the in kidnapping these wars uh, off the coast of Lands. <laughs> the term he used the term Africa, which is an ignorant way of putting it because the author ain't used that term. <clears throat> and even if the author do, which you could get into that book, we know that we're talking about Africa as a place name for any tropical or any place 16 degrees north and south of the of the equator but this um, this video I'm making right now is all about how we go relearn how to read so I underline that for a reason to show you that this modern day person don't understand history to the point that he put it in West Africa and, not, and his mistake is not alone every, every just about everybody making that mistake when they go do this way we're gonna look through that too
but they don't expect that you're going to learn how to read these languages, so they go translate them for you and make the movies and write the books, the history books. Not everybody dumb. So, you also use the term Negro because they've been dealing with the Negro River, which will put them in South America, but they still got the Niger River, so that also was the Black River, so you know. We can't put it in South America based off just that. He used the term Negro in 1453, but he mostly used the term more speaking about these people that he, that they captured as slaves. So, some said of this youth that the infant had been trained him for a priest. So, which, with the purpose of sending him back to his native land there to preach the faith of Jesus Christ. So, they capture him all and then they send him back to teach the people. So, that's when the people became blacks and other stuff come with it. Prince, Prince Henrique, he had a personal say a Negro boy stalked naked with a spear in his hand. They captured him now, who was found in a hut by the Portuguese and learned about, and then learned about reading, writing, and religion under the direct supervision of Prince Henrique. Well, so much success that some say of this youth that the infant had been trained him for a priest and the purpose of sending him back to his native land there to preach the faith of Jesus Christ. And, and that's what we got in America, right? And the victim, the names before you get saying back, is showing you what they used, to, what they called you. And they're going to show you why exactly, because they understood it. These Christians, these Henry kids and stuff, they, they know why about the show. They knew. As soon as they understood our language, they turned Christians with little effort. And I, who, and I, who put together this history in this volume, saw in the town of Lagos, boys and girls, the children and grandchildren in this in Portugal, of those first captives. You see, you ain't never been slaves. You've been captives in wars. Born in this land so good and true Christians as if from the beginning they had descended from the dispensation of Christ from those who were first baptized so they ritual lies in these molds because they know that these molds is the original people of the books that they go that they worship that the people the Christ is of the original Lagos the stories were happening in the Spain and stuff the original those stories showing going to show you what happened will start to happen in other places, especially in North America. They deal with the slave stuff. You see this right here on. They say the first captives born on the land, the children and the grandchildren of the ones who they captured start to be automatic Christians, like born into that thing. Easily teach the language to them and everything. So what we're gonna do they're going to keep the same language that they're talking about, but we're going to bring the truth out because they ain't create that neither. They're going to stick with these letters. These are your letters. C C A P T I. Them are your letters. Morris Canaanite. Morris Moabite letters. You're going to look at that. So let's go fast. So, they say, for the category more in the mind of Zurara, and we assume in the mind of Alfonso and the Portuguese sea captain as well as carried with it a very specific blueprint for action insofar as their people. Hold on. All right. Were regarded as Moors in some general sense. 
as these people were regarded as more in a general sense, talking about the so-called West African people being captured. In the, in the, you know, the popular transatlantic slave story, the whole world, I just think they know. They found themselves being treated as Moors in a very specific sense as an enemy to be fought, captured, and slowed so into slavery. So, this author coming upon his own mind to say, well, they gotta be calling these people Moors just because they only used to fighting people called Moors. <laughs> so, it's the same story. They give you when you read them Spanish story and they talking about Moors and in America fighting so-called Indians, they'll tell you the same thing. The Spanish just using those terms because that's what they used to back in the Spain versus the, the Spanish versus the Moors days in Spain. Like, and a lot of these people been in the time of Zarara and the so-called Spanish and all these things, they, but they got, they can interpret it for everybody in the world, right? We're going to interpret it for ourselves and laugh at the ignorance as we go. So that's the same thing they say, right? They say, oh, it's just a nostalgia thing. Even when it's a robber finally enunciates the concept of natural slavery, he does so as a subcategory of the enslavement of Moorish, Moorish prisoners of war. So they still can't get around the fact that he'd been looking at it as that back then. It is interesting in the context to note that though he was writing in 1453, Zorara ended his chronicle de Fiatus de Guinea in 1448. This was not for lack of subsequent slavery expedition. They continued and Zorara knew it. But after 1448, the process by which slaves were procured had become, according to Zorara, too commercial. And what he basically saying that it started to be a lot less about wars between more than Christian, but more about kidnapping of innocent peoples across the world. More basically, because <laughs> the Rara and the Portuguese and Alfonso and that's they knew who these people are, no matter where they find a man on the planet. <laughs> they had a sense like we got today. Of uh, more as being a group of people who marginalized from one place and who did this one thing, and they're like a group like you can they got jackets on, we got we the more it's like a bicycle gang or some dumb shit like that. We're gonna show how they can be practically millions of people at the same time, the victims of the transatlantic slave trade, the people who even wasn't a victim, the people who just living all over the place, they are more. So we're going to show you why it's, it's going to be simplified for you. <laughs> okay, before we go, some more. let's talk about Ali. We're going to use the word Ali as an example of the spread of language throughout the world throughout the nations the human family so Ali Mele Indonesia from the Arabic Akwali Kwali Ali <coughs> right there. intellectual and we got the Aramaic Arabic. A lot of this may not have been through in a, in a further vi in an older video, but this was David Banner. Kabir, and I got expert we see from the Bulgarian and the Catalan expert. And we use expert today. So this is all from the word Ali. See right there, expert. The Maltese, that's another good language to look through when you want to go through. Um, I, I call them uh, through languages that take you from one 
aspect to the author. You see, you say from Arabic, but we don't use Arabic characters. Not over here, we use these characters. I want to show you how you can read these characters from the ancient ancestors' point of view. Because I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know Arabic characters. All right, like that. I don't know real good, but I know these characters very good. Alphabetus. And that's how it'll be easy for us to see if we just use the characters we used to. We got wise, prudent, smart. The Stoali. That's the. Maltese version. Guagui, Guaguini, Guaguija. Very similar to also the so called Berber languages, too. And we'll rock in Arabic uh, to remember. Another version of Ali. To begin, to come to light, to bring, to offer. And this going to show you how Noah Drill even, even cool as I is. He had no all this. They got the Hebrew. They got the M on the end, Alam. Eternity, forever, world, nation, people, and that would all know what you're leaving, bro, right? How uh, you know? All um, coming before your time, being currently, physically before you now, from before, both temporary and location, being present, all Arabic, Arabian inscription, and Alam. Um, Retain the sound masculine plural and then in spite of being treated as a non human plural. <coughs> so they get into the word Ali. Allah. World, universe, cosmos, existence, things, creations. And this is another form that says this before you. We're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of Arabic, Hebrew, and these letters. I, you can look at it as. Um, Phoenician alphabets. We're gonna, we're gonna prove that too. Still coming from the ancient Egyptian world of the empire. Still look like this too. Um, to know. <laughs> a scholar, a man of letters. A knowledgeable person, a savant, you know, like a Liam B. And we're just going to do that. And you add mu to make it like a verb, a verbal noun. You add ta for the verbal noun, the active part of football. Teaching, Mu Alim, and Salim would mean peace. Mu Salim or Muslim would mean one who make peace, a peacemaker, like a sheriff. We want to take the spookums and all that too. I want the media to be telling you about cartoons. <laughs> and you see some of the words Malik, we got King, MLK, <laughs> Model of the Gang. We got Rabbi, Arab, Rabbi. Our chief, everyone to be simple, and we got more. Once, as we go back 
to a deeper banner. He can use the word more. Instead of black kids, he can say moors. <laughs> and he will be calling them lords or gods. And we're going to get into that. I think that's feminine and plural. Gods. Our goddess. Mary. You know, same thing. We have, we're not meant to do this. One video, I can't remember which one, but one again. So, let's deal with Moab. People be confused why we see things like more bites, we more bites, and who what happened to the more bites? We tell you they just their name just became more. <laughs> we just say these things because it's just simple. The letter M in its most ancient form, see M, <laughs> Emma. But look right here. I'll show you how to look at it. You see, you got the question mark on both sides that means ain't no vowels at this time period so that means you can put a file on any the way different moors would have been saying it in this ancient times the ancient Phoenician times you got different tribes or whatever right biblical they would have been saying it different somebody would have saying om somebody would have saying ma me, me, you would have different phonetic, but we ain't got no written vowels yet at this time. So when vowels come, we get mo as one of them for mother. And we know the most popular one, ma, m a, any vowel, because the, the original word is m. So keep that in mind, we're going to deal with father too. So they say mother of human beings. And they give you some examples from ancient texts. In this language we're dealing with the Syriac Syriac, which became Arabic and it's it's the Aramaic and all that. The ancient tongue out of the so called Bible and all that and shit, Genesis, you see. So, mother, and you see Abbas. You know, the Abbas is like the religious mother. And they say the origin and the source. So, again, divine. This is the physical. Of human beings. Now we get into the spiritual too, just to cover that origin. So, the main shoot of a vine, so the vine of fig tree, the main shoot is the mother. The top of the head, we deal with the crown chakra. And the rest is a relevant for our case. All right, let's go. Father, which will be B. And the same rules apply. You can put a vowel in the front, a vowel in the back, two vowels, Abba, and you got Ab. So, what we get? We get Mo. If you add the O behind the M, and you got Ab, Moab, which means mother and father. They're gonna tell you it means a lot of other technical things, but just know that they don't get technical with these other ancient words. They don't tell you the simplest thing that break them down like this. Like Abu means something like a father. Um, dealing with an older elder in some case it always could be something to deal with this definition the simplest word is without the vowels because vowels came after see all the 
back to the ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. They said, Father, same thing as mother. Ancestor or forefather. You see, dealing with the public home. Um, they got origin and source again to deal with the you know spiritual aspect you see source as an architectural term you know the architect the original representative so it's dealing with father just like Abba a chief monk spiritual father and dealing with the heavenly guards too because you know how they say our father and they prayers right with the abbot <laughs> and the uh, Asian Tibetan they got the habit, so that's no use. That same ancient tongue. So that's all more I really mean. The mother and the father. That's why in the United States. Proclamations. They call us and that the mothers and fathers of civilization. That's Moab, Moabites. Moabites would be the children of the mothers and the fathers, the children of Moab, which is the triune man, woman, and child, which is God. <laughs> and Mo got the same definition. We're going to look at that. And that's the reason why you'll see the majority using, telling you both things, you Moabites or you Moroccans. Because both of them mean the same thing. You just, all right, right here, we see MR. And now, and when they say Mori, they were saying, my lord. Like my Lord, when they talk about Christ, so we deal with the Syriac, which is like like I was saying that language that split into the two. You see, the split into either the Arabic script or the Hebrew script, but it's still being used. The the, the rules still apply, and we're using the alphabet that we're used to. To deal with the phonetics, the more voice but some geniuses when they decide to do that with the language. For us, prophet, prophetic in a way. <coughs> so they have Mari, Mari, more, any way you want to put it. Any vowels, you can put the vowels like some put moro, m o r o, some um, more m o o r. That's the English. You got m u u r o. That's the Washita American. Put your vowels anywhere you want, but the original term applies already. <coughs> m r. And they specifically use it for him at in that time, Yoshua. They would have been calling him Mori, my Lord, because they wouldn't be using English saying my Lord as we say the day for neck. They would have been saying Mori, which means my Lord. And they would have been saying um, Mori Islam more. They would have been saying the same thing we see today, Islam more. <laughs> Could I have said peace my lord <laughs> that's simple you're gonna get into that too as long as the ancient word it's like more phonetically 
it's just MR, but you see, even in the English come die as master, you can take everything out the middle, the MR is still there to donate what it means, which it means master in a human sense and divine, the Lord, the gods. So that's a word that David Banner could use that they would know because he's dealing with who they worship. David, the man that they all worship, <laughs> used that term <laughs> to call herself my lord, you see. Usually in reference of him. In those times, speaking the Aramaic, you would have been, we're going to get into the Aramaic and all other languages too. Honor. A title of respect which we get muster from today. MR and Mrs. MRS. He'd been a partition in the Roman, but he was still more. We would get into that. A chief, a master, honor. And we see the angelic and angelic order which goes back to him being the high priest of Anu back in the Egyptian days before we, even after the fall of the Egyptian you still can see that they still known as an angelic order of some sort into another epoch and you know MLK King definitely come down <coughs> as Malik and you know black <coughs> like I've seen the Arabic that's in it Emperor Khalif uh, Emir and Bay Bayet his house or structure or place got a lot of meanings <coughs> temple a royal place and rap means great or big they use for the word rabbi use for Arab all those words we don't we don't go by what people say or what TV say or some cartoons say about some Arabs. We we go by what it means for real. An elder or a chief or a noble. Yeah, P L H <laughs> no vowels means to work. And we use the word plow of course in all times. And we do use the word employee an employer from this more examples how uh, a lot of words still here it just got vowels in different places where you get different languages from it too you have the Spanish with different vowels in different places in English and the Portuguese and the different and even Russian and stuff like that but they'll be having the same word acting like they talk about different shit but you'll be able to not read it if you just know just look for the constant just look for the ancient Canaanite way because they create these letters we will get into how they got mandate manda mandara this is a text so now you know when they use the word text they talk about mandate but they ain't using the word mandate because that's like Showing that they can't over you. <laughs> so they use a the word that you used to pay in taxes. A democratic term. <laughs> that HD. And they get the word hold, of course. And hide. But 
this is an example. This is how I show you how more just something simple. The world is so ancient, but it's simpler than what we think. And we're making it. It became a lot of things because people write dictionaries over time. So a million dictionaries come out with a bunch of opinions from those authors. But we don't care about those authors because they're behind the original word anyway. So we, if we can get the origin, why we care about somebody who come after the origin? We can get the origin. So we get all origins right now. I'm just showing you before flowers were still exist, and then the oldest words because it was a flower. If a flower added, then you might as well go back to the ones before the flowers and add to see what it really mean or what it should mean because it could be wrong. You be wrong, fix it. Then nobody can tell you you be wrong because you going back and getting the origin of that word so let's hold or hide as you can see they say to seal up something inside of something else we call it hide <laughs> and that's the HD before the word hold or hide even been thought of because flowers didn't exist but HD exists and he meant this our phonetics might have say hide or something like that before the actual letter began. Thing. I'm trying to explain that. Another definition for more. To say. <coughs> then they got two command. <coughs> we don't see some words that come from that. That been made with that. MR with a sound before the MR, not after, just before, you see. With a vowel, any vowel before that, Omar. Omar, <laughs> Amir, you see. Gonna make words from that, that come later in the future from different tribes, different countries. Omar means oration they use it the beginning and adding stuff to it but it still got a sub meaning to say because an orator a speaker see just a speaker and a mortar means speaker and a teacher in a child music academy that's a mortar a mortar Interesting from the original ear that we used to say in the Semitic Afro Asiatic tongue with the EL. <laughs> Not just the EL. So, the, uh, this one looked like Illinois. The L in Illinois to me.
That's another thing he can call him. <laughs> he can call him ill. Five people, all five people ain't gonna be all good and all, all, all bad. That's ridiculous. Why people always got that question? What do they really talk about? What's the way? Ask me a question that's similar to that. <laughs> I just know everything got some kind of skill. I'm good and bad. Ain't nothing that black or white. You know, some things we can. to know that we know what's right from wrong. Those things that hurt and cause pain and shit like that, right? So, <laughs> you see how they take mother and they make the word people and nation because they know, we know as people that mothers birth nations. Third one. Take mother M and make another word out Amuma Amuma Mold in Matrix, which means the womb. And the mold also means like a spirit man, like <coughs> um, your mold. Now they say in the biblical aspect that God made a clay, a man of clay, like a mold. And metaphysical sense, just like a shadow, like they have on the um, Tom and Jerry. But they had um, they had Tom. He used to be acting like he was huge with the shadow biting and just a small mouse when he come out the into the light. <laughs> that concept, or uh, well, the brain scientifically, just know. Like say like a seed, a small seed, a tree, or a so-called infant, or um, an infant, um, um, an embryo, or uh, fetus, and that fetus on that tree. You can look at it from a tree to that point to make it a point. That tree grow from that seed to the tallest object in the land on the planet. But it start off with a seed, so where all the material come from the tree to grow into that big material. So the material already in this aspect as a mold, you already got a spiritual mold of that tree growing. And the physical more go into the spiritual. <laughs> that makes sense. It's a more of creation. And it said that all men have morals. Man, man, and woman, the same thing. <laughs> and we grow into our morals. And they say that our morals, a lot more could be giants. <laughs> but we don't grow. <laughs> but we get stifled in our growth. Like a span, that's where we get span from. Shrink in our growth, <coughs> but you know we see each 
description how they got them big giant statues out there. So who knows? They might not know how to grow up to their full mold. That's for a whole nother video. Let's uh, continue. We got Salty. We know what Salty means. As you can see, it's an ancient word. Patio, Patel. I don't know. I can't remember why I put this in there, but let's continue because I probably not going too long. And we got a quarter, right? Like quarantine. <laughs> City, town, village, and we get the red quad cartridge on that one. Cartagena, the city of Kenya, Ghana, city of Goa, city of Ghana, Ghana, Cartagena. The city in the ancient tongue. Let's see Canaan. And look how much names people got <laughs> names all over the place. You can go through every little thing. Even Kodoresh. You got Cyrus. <laughs> this means heart. But we are Ghani, Guinea. You know they like to call people Guineas and stuff, right? But they don't even know what that means. A rich person. <laughs> we had gold. Rich. And Judith. Get into some names. <coughs> this means a woman of Judea. All goes back to ancient times. All these names still the same thing too. And we still carry these names. Jordan, like Mikael Jordan. One who descends. Just to show you how. And I really been like four graphs. Not spooky. Everything has some kind of explanation or origin. Emmanuel means God is with us. John. Try to give you some of the most commonest thing you can think of. The illness. Grace by Yah. Jania. Just like Gania. Tanya. <laughs> they say the name may be Arabic because they don't know. So let's teach them. It's from Jania. That is from Gania. The J and the G is interchangeable. Apparently, if you're honest. <laughs> we got Jane and Jana and Jenny, but they all call themselves Guinea. Guinea and Guinea. <laughs> It's a good thing though, like we just see. It means rich. <laughs> so anyway, in the more bite, <coughs> we got ours for earth. And then no vowels, so you just really R S. But the way they say it, speaking it means ours. So we put the A there because we know that's what it sound like now for us. So. They used to say the A without the A being it. And we got arts. And they give you the more by definition and the Punic because they know them the same people over time. The more by definitions and the Punics. And that's what they call these people. We call all these people Moors. 
because we understand the etymology of these words. The Moabites, just the children of their mothers and fathers, Moors, the children of their mothers and fathers. Our gods are your mother and father as the creator, which is God. So regardless if you claim to be Moabites, Moors, um, Moroccan, you still say the same thing. Goddamn child of God. So the saying go anything but the child of God when they talk about us, right? <coughs> the same thing that they saying you use anything but morals. They call you anything but morals. Oh, moral bites. Moroccans. Which would mean child of God. Moab, Moab. Suffix on the Moroccans and Moabites would mean children of God or children of their parents and prophets too. Because you got the I I E T S on it being Ites, which means the children of a nation now. And Moab by itself means mother and father or in a spiritual sense, God. <laughs> ancient people everything simple and ain't got all the extra ideas for the to things because the man ain't sit down with more than all the bullshit here <laughs> the Greek philosophy ain't got out here and put all that bullshit on the shit so fuck it we deal with simplicity and they say how they act like they don't know this is how they get you to. Just because they're American, they want to act like even different from the rest of the world. But they're trying to say that the word Guyana is a Native American Caribbean Arawak language. So they want to show you that Guyana is Benny. <laughs> Rich. Same thing. Shout out, we just going to do they ain't gonna put that up there because they can't they can't have that they can't have you knowing that you moors so we see how the word court court means city and lot of the word words used in there we see cartagena which is cartagena which city? Let me see. Guinea. And, uh, let me see. And, just a little while. That's a magical amulet that they use a lot. I swear they keep running into this. <coughs> This language on this amulet is in, it, 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 in a way that they can teach, they can learn a lot from this amulet. I look at the language a lot of linguistics, I linguistic people who learn their languages go look at this amulet and learn a lot that they use it. Uh, a mixed language by a teaching something about the ancient and modern way. And you can see a Ghania, somebody named Ghania on that. <laughs> the Ghania family. Neither have more of it, too. So, this right here is Amulet. <coughs> Linguistics love this Amulet because they're teaching them something about languages in the ancient world. And these moors from this, from a, from a kind of more modern up time period been writing still writing like that <laughs> like they've been a thousand years away from their time like it's crazy that's why they like that little amulet and talk about it and we got a Quintus Lolius Urbicus he was a so called Berber right but he been the governor of Roman Britain in the year 139-142 so you got Moors who rule Europe that fuck you got Numidia that way from allegedly <coughs> they find a 
inscriptions all over this Africa dealing with this town but they try but if you don't go and get the history yourself they will make it look like that the Romans come in here and give them all that which is you know we know some parts of that is true because the later invasions from the different European countries into Africa they bring a lot of stuff back into it but we want to show you how these Moors in North Africa have been speaking Moors like, like a motherfucker the guy two leads in them <coughs> and they rule in Europe and they bring that to there. You look at the letters on there. Almost just like we see today. And that's a Berber ruling in Britain. <laughs> Another one, Mastigas. And he been a moral Roman king the ruled and he been the king of the Moors and Romans. So he ain't been no joke. The Mauritania, Kaisenaria. We're going to see who these original Romans is to so called Romans. These ain't been Romans. These have been Moors of ancient Italy. Kingdom of the Arras, the Gaul. And. I walk down the screen, I see this somebody bumper sticker had this. <coughs> and remember the ancient ones, the artists, the arts in the Punic. And you can see how they still playing with it, with us. And we already deal with this Malik. But look, Phoenician, Arabic, and Hebrew. Let's just cover everybody. The Arabic, Canaanite, and Hebrew, Northwest America. They know what's up. I might stop right here again. Cut a long, take a long time to upload. So, after the legendary foundation by Romulus, Rome was ruled for a period of 244 years by a non-monarchical system initially with sovereigns of Latin, Sabine, and Etruscan kings. So even before, even after the Roman Empire began, the Moors still ruled over it before they even start with the king Romulus. The tradition handed down seven kings. So these Moors the original Rome to get that script even over there. On the hand, some Italian people such as the the Red Ritians, the Camuni and the Etruscans spoke a non Indo European language. People speaking the languages of Afro Asiatic family are known to have settled in some coastal parts of insular art. Italy, Sardinia, and Western Sicily, specifically the Semitic Phoenicians and Carthaginians. <laughs> so, that right there will tell you how. We're going to start right there. We're going to start back. How <sighs> everything get mixed up and within each other. We just got to start looking at everything as black and white. We'll be able to see the truth and stuff. You'll know that a lot of history that to you that you wouldn't even think of you associate with other things. <laughs>